Hello, it's Ryan Gordon. Here comes part eight. And I thought today we might do something a little different. Um, we have been doing a lot of very basic stuff to figure out how to get something to play. and It's the basic idea of how audio processing works, but I think it's time to start working on graphics. Now, when I originally talked about this, I joked that we should make a Winamp clone. Um, and we are kind of going to do that now. Um, the nice thing about this is that Winamp skins are very easy to use, uh, very easy to integrate. Uh, they're not a complicated format, and um, it avoids the need for any program art because there are lots and lots of options. Now, I love this website, the Just Solve the File Format Problem website, because of this piece of clip art right here. I find that so reassuring. Anyway, all you need to know about Winamp skins, the files you can download off the internet, is they're zip files with a different file extension, and they just have a bunch of bitmap files, Windows bitmap files in them. Nothing complicated or unstandard at all, um, for the most part. So we're going to need two things here. We're going to need the Skinner's Atlas, which I'm going to go download from this site right here, uh, which is a really ugly Winamp skin, but what this all actually does is show you exactly where each bitmap should go. So we're going to need that for other purposes. We're going to download skin, right-click, save as, save. Yep, there we go. And then let's go back here for one second, because we're going to need the other important thing. Where are you? Internet Archive, which has a bazillion Winamp skins, so you can just find something you really like in here. Look at these all. Oh my gosh. I mean, the thing is, people made Winamp skins for all sorts of stuff. There's really, like, good-looking skins and things that look like, you know, you know, something out of Aliens and, you know, stuff that looks try to look like actual, like, CD player amplifier type things. And then just things that are, like, you know, fan art things. Like, here's one that really like Mario or some sort of weird Sonic fetish thing or whatever, you know, like things that aren't very functional, but like if you really, really were into Wonder Woman, you could get a Winamp skin that looked like it. Um, let's just grab one that looks pretty fancy here. Like the Sony one seems pretty good. So let's just download this. I mean, that that's a good safe one right there. So let's download that. Where is it? I don't want a PNG. I want the actual file. There it is. WSZ. Sometimes they're just dot .zips, but Winamp skins were WSC files, but it's just a zip file. So, um, Okay, so what was that called? Expensive Hi-Fi. That's good. That'll work nicely. All right, so let's get these two things in here. Now, these are uh, tar bombs, they would call them. They, they, don't, they don't unzip into uh, a subdirectory, so you got to be careful when you undo these. We'll call that one Hi-Fi, and the other one was the Atlas. So we'll do that in Hi-Fi. Unzip. Where'd you go? Downloads. Was expensive, yeah, expensive Sony Hi-Fi. We'll put that one there. Oh, this one was not a top or tar bomb. I stand corrected. Um, let's move that into something we can actually see. All right, so there's those are there, and then let's get the Atlas while we're here too. Unzip. Where did that go? Skinner's Atlas. There it is. Okay. Good. Okay. So just to give you an idea, now that we have this, let's look at our Hi-Fi one, that fancy Sony one. And let's just open all these bitmap files and see what this looks like. Here they go. Okay. So the main window is called main. Let me just find that real quick. There it is. And it's just literally a bitmap looks like that. And then there'll be other things on top of it like... And there's different window stuff, but like C buttons are the actual buttons. Two rows of them. The top row is what they look like normally, and the bottom row is what they look like when they're pushed down. And, you know, other things like that. There's lots of different bits to the interface, but that's the idea. So let's try and hook some of this up, as we should. So let's, um... Okay, well, let's get rid of this for now, because we're going we're gonna to use that, but we need, um... We need the atlas right now, because we're going to need to figure out exact pixel locations of things. So let's do the same thing over here, just so we have it. As you can see, this one's ugly. It's just meant to be... This is the position of things, so you know how to... This was meant to be a template for people to use when they were making their own skins. Uh, you would you would draw over all of this stuff. So, okay, let's get back to what we were doing here. What we need is this to start with. Okay, so here's our program where we left it. I want to say there is a bug in this balance slider. We will get to that later. Someone pointed out in a comment. I appreciate it. We'll deal with that next time, but, or sometime in the future. But right now, let's do some graphics for now. So what you need to know to get started is that SDL does not just have to draw rectangles. We've been drawing just basic squares for this thing right now, so 
it looks like. Oh, oh, I lied. I did some edits to that. Let me see. So right now it just looks like this, which is you know our freaky green alien dude with three eyes and two mouths. Um, that's not fancy, and STL can do more than that, obviously. But that was just programmer art and placeholder. So let's um, do something a little fancier. All the drawing of those rectangles and what we're going to do right now all comes from this thing, this renderer we created. And what STL does with this renderer is this is a renderer is used to get bits into this window we created. But what it does behind the scenes is says, okay, you're telling me things like draw a rectangle or draw this picture or whatnot. And I'm figuring out how to do that with OpenGL or Direct3D or Metal or whatever else, which is to say that uh, even if you're doing simple 2D things, we're trying to find ways to move them onto the GPU to make them faster and give you some other neat features like rotation and scaling and stuff like that. Um, so, and that's good. And that also, like, this will do the best thing on whatever your platform is. If you're on Mac, you'll use Metal. If you're on Windows, it'll use Direct3D. Other places, like WebGL gets used or OpenGL or whatnot. Um, so if you want to draw more than just rectangles, you want to draw actual pixel images like bitmaps, then you need to put them on the GPU in a texture. Those are called SDL texture, just like that. And we're going to change this in a moment, but the basic idea, well, okay, let's start. There's two things. There's textures and there's surfaces. A surface is the same thing as a texture, except it's on the CPU. It's just a buffer of pixels sitting in memory with a little bit of metadata for like uh, data format and stuff attached to it. Um, and we have a very convenient thing, just like we can load WAV files in SDL. It doesn't do a whole bunch of different image loaders, but we do have a bitmap loader, the standard Windows bitmaps, standard in quotation marks there. Um, so let's see, let's just hard code this right now to our hi-fi thing, main.bitmap. My dog barking downstairs, main.bitmap. Okay. Um, you know what? We're going to be loading a couple of things, so let's just go straight for the subroutine here. Uh, SDL texture, pointer, load, texture, char, f name. And let's take our thing we're doing there. This is going to be f name. We'll call these skins because they are skins. Equals load, texture, that thing. Okay. We'll get to that in a moment. Do, 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 do. Okay, so we load the thing. Assuming this works, because this can fail for any number of reasons. If not surface, return null. Sorry, it didn't work. Okay. Uh, but assuming it worked, we successfully load the bitmap. This could fail for lots of reasons. It could be an invalid file. The file could be missing, permissions, whatever. Just fail there. If it works, we're going to use a thing. Let me get the right signature for this. Include SDL, render, create texture. Where'd you go? Create texture from surface. Now, there's a lot of tap dancing involved in creating a texture. But this is kind of like a one-shot helper function where you can just be like, Here's the renderer where I want you to upload this to. This is how I'm going to get this data to the GPU. And here's the buffer of pixels that we created. Cool. It creates a texture for you. So now you can draw with it with the renderer once this returns successfully. Now, this does not free the surface. So we're going to do that ourselves. Whether it succeeds or not, the surface is still valid. But we don't need it once we get onto the GPU. So we're going to free that and return the texture. Now, this is worth noting. Maybe may be null if this failed. And we will check down here. So we load the texture. If not, skin main. If this failed, panic and abort for now. We'll make this more robust later. Failed to load main skin main.pmp SDL get error. And the, the reason why, because we we drop out as soon as something fails, so that'll still theoretically have the correct thing. In fact, here, let's put some things there so we can see an actual error and see if it aborts right at the start. Uh, I keep forgetting to hit compile before I do that. Where'd you go? There you go. There we are. So this should just fail immediately here. Yep, there it is. Couldn't open hi-fi main blue out because that's a bogus file. And yeah, uh, that we said we couldn't load the skin, and that's the actual error message from SDL get error. So, okay, good. That's what we want to see there. 
So let's get this back up here. Okay, so we have this thing, and now we're going to go down all the way to the bottom here to where we're drawing stuff. Now, we can get rid of something very important here, our beautiful green fading background. So let's get rid of that. Let's look for everything that says the word green and get rid of it, because this is gone. This was just a placeholder. We'll do that. Get rid of green. Green's gone. Okay. And these things are also going away, but we'll just if them for now, just so we don't forget to deal with them later. Okay, so right now all we're doing is we're setting the draw color, clearing the window, which you want to do every frame, regardless of whatever else you're doing. And we're presenting it. Okay, so we're going to do this and go uh, SDL render copy, if I recall how to do this. You tell it which renderer you want to use, you tell it the texture you want to use, which is skin main. And then you have two SDL rectangles, which we are going to say null and null for now. We might change that later, but you should get... Um, we want to draw this texture, which is the, the bitmap we loaded. Null, the, the first one is which part of the thing you want to, because you don't have to draw the whole thing. You draw a little piece of it in the middle. But we're saying null for the, draw the whole thing. And the destination rectangle, which we're saying null, say draw to the whole window. And this is going to look a little funny the first time we do this, but let's give this a try real quick and see what this looks like. Oh, oh, yeah, we got to change the file name back. My bad. Sorry about that. Because I put a bunch of blah, blah, blah at the end of this. So here we go. Oh, boy. Okay, so let's try and run that again. Okay, there you go. Just that quickly, we have a very stretched out Sony amplifier. So let's close this down for a second. Um, because we still have this window set to 640 by 480. But the nice thing about Winamp is that all of these skins had a very specific specific size. My dog's barking outside. I don't know if you can hear her. She's mad she's outside in the rain. It's not actually raining right now, but she wants to come in and play. She knows I'm having fun without her. Um, okay, so all, all the main bitmaps, all your main window in Winamp was always seven, 275 pixels by 116. Let's copy that. Put that in here so that our main window is that same size, and then compile that, and we should get, there you go, that's the size it should actually be. We have our title bar here, we'll deal with that later too, but that's starting to look like a, you know, a Winamp uh, window there, even though we're not doing much with it yet. Um, so let's do something with it. Um, do, 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 cool, and done, done, okay. Um, so, now that we have something prettier on the screen, the basic rules of what we've already written doesn't change. So let's deal with that really quickly. And say, uh, Winamp, if you look at our thing here, they have they don't have a pause button. They do have a pause button, but they have a play and a pause button, which are separate. And we're going to have to deal with that eventually if we want to use these uh, skins. But let's um, let's hook up the pause button just to play because right. Well, you know, fine. We'll hook it up to pause. That's fine. So we need to know where that thing is. I'm going to zoom in on this and select on this. There we go. Because the GIMP will tell me this very important thing, which is its position and its size. So our pause button, where'd you go? There you go. The rectangle where our pause button is is now 6288 instead of 400, 100. 6288, and the size of it is 2318. 23 pixels by 18 pixels. And that's where that is. So now, in theory, having just changed that, let me build this. Make sure we have volume turned up. There we go. In theory, we should now have this hooked up to work. Let's see. I do not know which one of this is paused right now because we haven't hooked up the other thing. Was it. It's the third button in. Okay, so let's see. Let's look at this. Where'd you go? There we are. So one, two, three. So this should be our pause button. Let's see if this will play our default music. There you go. And it pauses it. There you go. And if I click up here, nothing because there is nothing hooked up there. But all we had to do was change the coordinates where that button was. So we're making progress here. But as we can see, I couldn't figure out where's, which button was the pause one. So let's hook up C buttons while we're here. Where are you? C buttons, C buttons. Let's find you real quick. There you are, C buttons. Okay. Top row is what they look like when they're uh, 
just sitting there idle, and the bottom row is what they look like when they're pressed in. So let's set this thing up really quickly here. This is our pause button. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay, good. So that's 46 and 0 because it's the top row. That's why it's 0. And 2318, just like the other one. So let's get these hooked into our program. Uh, let's put some more rectangles. So pause rectangle. Let's put C buttons, pause, rectangle. What did we say this was? It was 46, 0. I'm hoping the dog's going to get bored and go away in a moment. Right now she's very mad she's still outside. I love that you get to hear the uh, drama of my house. She has a bed to sit on out there. And lots of squirrels to chase, so I'm not too concerned. Alright, so 46-0, and then 23-18, because it's the same size as the other one. So this is the thing in, C but in the C buttons bitmap. That's where it should look to find that. And while we're being fancy here, let's also do pause pressed, which would be the other one. Let's get that guy real quick. What are you? You are 4618. Same thing, but 18 down from it. So let's do that. And 2318 because it's about the same size, of course. Okay. And we also need to, of course, load the C buttons texture. So fortunately, we put that in a subroutine. So let's just do this right here. C buttons, what do they call it? Capital C buttons. We'll deal with that. Okay. So now when we come down here, well, let's do two things here. We're starting to get a lot of variables here, and this is going to start to chafe me in a moment, so we're going to want to uh, deal with that. Let's see. C button, pause, pressed, equals SDL false. Oh, that poor dog. Okay, let's see here. So when you, let's see, when, when we're in this mouse event for uh, that, let's also look in the same thing as a fall through. If you're button up or button down, we check both of these mouse buttons now because we're going to need to know when that changes. Const SDL bool pressed equals E button. I think this is how it works. Equals SDL pressed. I'm not looking that up until the compiler tells me that's not a thing. Strictly speaking, you don't have to do this weird uh, inline conditional to say true or false, but I like the clarity of that because some compilers get upset or they cast it to something other than this value, so better safe than sorry there. Um, so pressed, blah, 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 and if we're in the pause thing, that will tog toggle if we are pressed. If pressed, if we're pushing the button down, then toggle it. Otherwise, don't do anything in here except decide C button pressed equals pressed. And while these are the same value now, let's just for clarity say if it's pressed, then we want to make a change there. Okay, cool. Uh, da, 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 da. If the button is pressed, okay, good. So now down here, when we're drawing the thing, uh, okay, so we draw the main thing there, cool. And then we're going to do this part. Let's see, let me get the right names for these things. This is this thing, okay, and pressed. Let's do that, okay. Talking to myself a little bit. Well, I guess technically this whole stream is me talking to myself, but still, you know, render, copy, renderer. Now, we drew, we cleared the screen, then we drew the main background, and now we're going to draw not all the buttons. Eventually we will, but let's do this one here. So we say renderer, then C skin, C buttons. That's the texture with the bitmap in it. Then we want to do just the rectangle in there of whether it is. If it's pressed, then we want to do this rectangle, which we, is the address of it. We need a pointer to that structure we built up there. Otherwise, we want to do just the rectangle of it not pressed. And the destination for it. Wait, did I do that wrong? Is that the wrong value? And then we want to do it at pause rect. Okay, we have it at the right place. Okay, pause rect. And then we the destination for it is pause, paused rec, did I, paused or pause? Pause rec, okay, yeah, English is terrible. So um, if you, we're giving it a rectangle that's the same size as this, uh, 
although a different position, but the same size, so it won't have to stretch this at all, but it can shrink it or grow it as appropriate, even if it's not at the same aspect ratio, depending on what you give it here. It's a neat feature. Easy to do, cheap on GPU. All right, we'll leave all this stuff here. So now, if this works, let's compile that. Oh, oh got that one wrong, okay. Oh. That needs to be the address of a structure, not the structure itself, because it wants a pointer. Okay. Yeah, okay. So now we should have just the one button drawn on there. Yeah, as you can see, our pause button showed up. We haven't drawn any of these other buttons, but it's in the right place. And as you push it, it makes a difference. But you can also see that the button is changing because we're drawing the correct bitmap for whether it's pushed or not on that skin. So that's pretty great. Okay, cool. Um, that's pretty good. We're at 21 minutes. It's time to stop. I think that's a good start for today. Next time, we'll eat some vegetables and fill in the rest of these buttons, and that's just going to be kind of a little tedious, so let's not do that right now. We'll do that next time, and we'll hook up, like, the volume slider and stuff, too, so. Um, okay, this is good. I'm going to go give my dog a treat, um, give her some scratches, because when she's not barking, she's a good dog, and I will see you next time. Oh, before I go, let's see if this is still on here. Uh, I have a Patreon. I haven't mentioned it except in the description of the videos each time, but if you want to join this, it's patreon.com slash Iculus. I love money. Um, I appreciate getting paid, even though I love you and do this for free, too. Um, but at the end of this video, I'm going to tack on the names of people that are patrons that said they don't mind having their name published on the end of this. If you would also like your name published, uh, join up. And you can uh, be in the next video, because there'll be a whole bunch more to go, even though we're starting to make really good progress that looks like this. I mean, that no longer looks like a freaky green three-eyed alien anymore, so hooray. All right, have a good day. I'll see you next time. Take care.